Arkansas forcing turnovers and then converting it into points, and they've done a good job. But a lot of these are ill-advised passes, poor spacing by the Cowboys. You saw Gennaro Bargo there with a couple of baskets. He has 12 points already. And the points off turnovers you see there, Arkansas with a 15-point edge. The Cowboys have turned it over 13 times in the early going. Arkansas also red hot in three-point range, four of seven so far. The pass inside, a little too strong for Lane. Baker back the other way. Oklahoma State will have great success when they force the Razorbacks to play half court. They did a good job denying the inbounds, uh, the entry pass to the post. And then Mo Baker came up with a nice steal. Lane came up hobbling a little bit. Might have turned an ankle. There's a lot of time left in this game. Cowboys just need to relax, get some half-court offense going, get a run of themselves, continue to take away easy baskets, take better care of the basketball, make the Hogs play half-court defense. Melvin Sanders has checked back in for OSU. Arkansas has gone to a zone. Sanders in and also on the other end of placing lane. Carl Baker. Andre Williams made the spin move and referee John Clogarty called a jump ball underneath. There was a whistle and I believe there's going to be a foul called, but the outside official wins that battle. I think he was fouled on the back side before the, uh, the turnaround of the middle where the outside official saw it. The baseline official, Kerry Sitton, had the foul. Eddie Sutton getting an explanation right in front of us. Meanwhile, Arkansas with the basketball. Pass inside to Gibson. And a quick whistle and foul. John, this is a veteran crew that works in the SEC and also the Big 12 with the John Clarity and Mike Dividow and Kerry Sidden. However, I think they missed that one on the Cowboys the last time. Well, and they've, they've given it to Jan Zian, and he has three fouls now. Halfway through the first half. Thought they were going to call that one on Melvin Sanders, but Fred picks up his third foul. Baker, open three. Too strong. And a whistle and coming in over the back. I don't think, I think the jump. foul was reported wrong. I don't think that foul was on Fred. It certainly looked like it should have been Sanders. Coach Sutton's correct in that. He and his staff do a great job. You look at associate head coach there, Sean Sutton, Glenn Cyprian, Kyle Keller, Brooks Thompson. He has an outstanding staff that works extremely hard. Well, they're going to, they're not going to change the foul. It's going to stay on Jan Zian. So Fred still in the game with three fouls. Victor Williams dribbles out of pressure all the way down the floor over Baker. And he's kicked out of Great job of breaking the press by Victor, but you cannot make parallel passes to the mid-court or baseline in transition. Razorbacks did a good job of hustling back. Ivan McFarland though, now will check in for Jan Zian, who has to take a seat with three fouls and 10 21 to go in the first half. There was two plays back to back on the calls by the official. I'm not sure it was correct when they didn't call the foul on Andre and then call the foul on Fred. And again, the Cowboys are having trouble hanging on to the basketball. Maurice Baker losing control there. Another turnover. Cleveland. Baseline to Jones. He looks across court. Gibson with Baker on him. Spins away in the lane. Tough. Kicks it out to Blake Edmonds for three. Air ball. And coming out of there with it is OSU. Victor Williams. They have numbers four on two. And a whistle and a blocking call on Gibson. Pretty good call there. It looked like uh, Gibson was not quite set. Good decision by Ivan McFarland in the open court to give the ball to Victor Williams, the point guard. Victor decides to take it all the way. That's a close call. Well, there's that something that's been brought up before they have in the NBA that they don't have in college is Gibson is so deep underneath the basket there. Should you make that a charging call even if he is set? Well, it's certainly a, a judgment play, and he's very deep. Victor had already left his feet. Going back to the previous defensive possession, Cowboys have really done a good job in the half court defending the Razorback. The problem has been turning the basketball over and giving them easy runouts. Victor Williams missed the first free throw. There's one more coming. Shane Gadsden back in for the Cowboys. Larry Satchel back in for Arkansas along with Dionisio Gomez, Brandon Dean, and J.J. Sullinger. Victor gets one out too. He's an 82% free throw shooter. 
27 to 10, Arkansas in front. TJ Cleveland backs off. Brandon Jean in the lane. Tries to find Sullinger. McFarland got a hand on it and knocked it out of bounds. Cowboys are forcing the Razorbacks into a half-court game, which they wanted to do early. 18 on the shot clock. Brandon Dean with the ball, and Melvin Sanders all over him on the baseline. He goes up. That's great defense. Satchel bailed him out by being open. Sullinger off the screen for three. Shane's got to get in his tracks and get to him quicker. He is an outstanding freshman. Inbounded to Victor Williams. He holds up for a moment. Now across the timeline to Gadsden. 30 to 10. Kind of believe the Hogs were five out of eight from three-point line. Some of them coming in transition. That came out of the half-court set. Bad pass inside by Gadsden. Cleveland picks it off. Another turnover. Sullinger on the baseline to Gomez. Dean. It's a two-pointer. The last two possessions, the Razorbacks have executed their half-court offense. Cowboys have been slow to get the shooters, and they've made them pay. Gadsden working against the pressure. Gets it across. Passes it to Victor Williams. In the lane. Down to McFarland, who lays it in. And he's fouled. A chance for a three-point play. And at any point, now you need anything to give you some momentum. That's what happens when you break the press. One of Coach Sutton's philosophies is to take the ball all the way to the baseline, just like Victor does. He finds Ivan. Great finish in traffic. But you want to make them pay for pressing you and try to score. And this is a three-point opportunity for the Cowboys. McFarland, 56% from the free throw line, trying to finish the three-point play. No good. Satchel with a rebound. Razorbacks by 20. Lob pass, baseline. Was not tipped. Just thrown out of bounds by T.J. Cleveland. So a turnover for Arkansas. Still a lot of time left. Cowboys have just got to get some continuity offense. They start playing with some confidence. They can get some back cuts. Relieve some of this pressure that the Razorbacks are putting on them. Realistically, Coach, where would you like to be if you're going to have to be trailing the first half and half? Well, you'd certainly, certainly like to get this thing down into single digits. Uh, if you can, 18-point lead right now, and they'd like to get it down to 10 or less. Another steal after the made basket by Gadsden in the lane. They have numbers. Good pass. Underneath, Ivan McFarland on the reverse laying off a beautiful feed from Gadsden. Gadsden took the defense away, came back to McFarland, who was running the court hard. Nice finish in transition. Six straight points for the Cowboys. It's a 16-point ball game now. Cleveland hounded by Victor Williams out front. McFarland with the pressure on Gomez. The Hawks certainly do not want Gomez handling the ball out front. Good pressure applied by Ivan. Shot clock at 12. Seven and a half minutes to play, first half. Lob pass inside to Satchel. He's open. And a late whistle. And a foul is going to be called to McFarland as he took a swat at Satchel's shot inside and actually, actually hit him in the face, I think. Well, I was blocked out by the official on that particular play. He did come across his face. So a little spurt of momentum there for the Cowboys. Halted slightly by the foul call on McFarland. That's the first on Ivan and Larry Satchel at the free throw line. First and two, that was short. Such is only a 44% free throw shooter. The Cowboys need to rebound this one. Should have been out of bounds. Great hustle. McFarland dove on the floor for it. It goes off of Gomez's leg out of bounds. It'll be OSU's basketball when we come back. 7-19 to play. The Cowboys trying to fight back. They're down 16. You're watching the Cowboy Sports Television Network. One year is ending. A new one is dawning. It's time to save on a new Ford. Hundreds of vehicles, one big event, 
The Ford year-end clearance going on now at your Oklahoma Ford dealer. Get 0% financing or up to $1,000 cash back on virtually every new Ford car. $1,500 cash back on Windstone. Hurry. Ford year-end clearance at your Oklahoma Ford dealer and soon. Attention vegetarians, viewing discretion advised. It's the new Ultimate Meat Lover's Pizza from Pizza Hut, piled high with an awesome array of six succulent meat toppings, and now smothered in six kinds of cheese. Six meat toppings and six cheeses, ow! Oh! For the most seriously satisfying pizza on earth, you'd expect to pay $12.99, but it's only $8.99. $8.99! The new Ultimate Meat Lover's Pizza, only at Pizza Hut. Vegetarians resume normal viewing. Now on aisle three, straight from the oven, French bread. On 12, we're offering low, low prices on fresh vegetables. And by the checkout, you'll find full-service banking with Bank of Oklahoma. Only Be OK has over 20 convenient day, evening, and weekend locations inside Albertsons. So get your bread and take care of your dough. And with Be OK's totally free checking and free Visa check card, we're even more convenient. So more than ever, you're better off at Be OK. I think we had had a violation unchecked here on this last free throw. I think Larry Satchel misses the entire basket, and when that happens, you've got to get the ball out of bounds. He missed the whole goal, hit the side of the basket. We mentioned he's only a 44% free throw shooter. Cowboys got the ball, but should have got it on the violation. Different press by the Hogs, this time 2-2-1. Baker with it in the lane, spin, shoot, score. That's the way Coach Sutton wants his players to attack the press. Great confidence, excellent spacing, good coaching during the timeout. 32 to 18 now. The Cowboys with the last eight points of the ball game. Brandon Dean driving on Sanders. That's a wall. That's a wall. And he gets a timeout though. A 30-second timeout. Brandon Dean was able to coerce the referee into that call. I thought when you, you go down, you're not dribbling the basketball, that has to be a walk. I guess the officials thought in that particular situation that he was still maintaining possession and dribbling and they're going to have to do something about this timeout rule. We saw that happen twice against Northwestern State on Monday night. There you get a great look at Coach Sutton, one of the outstanding coaches in the country. Won 260 games at Arkansas. He's won 260 at Oklahoma State. Got a chance to win his 700th game uh, this year. But one of the things that they're going to have to do, you're going to have to have certainly great possession before you get the timeout. Well, Arkansas shooting lights out so far. 61% from the field. They've hit half of their 10 three-point attempts, and they have two guys in double figures, Sullinger with 11, and Gennaro Pargo with 12. Charles Tatum in the game. He comes in for instant offense. In the game against Chattanooga, he had eight straight points. Earl Baker back in as well. There's Sullinger with the basketball. Shane Gadsden on him. Creates some space. Three-pointer is short. Gomez tipped it away. Tatum comes up with it. Dean for three. They've really made the Cowboys pay on second chance opportunities and there we should have had the rebound. When the ball is shot defensively, everyone must put a body on someone, on someone and make sure they box out on the defensive glass. That ends the run by OSU of eight straight points and it's back to a 17 point advantage for Arkansas. Andre Williams inside to McFarland. Turns, too hard off the board. There's Andre with a follow and he'll get it to go and pick up the foul. Ivan missed the shot inside, but Andre got that rebound because he attacked the offensive glass and put it back up strong. That's what the coaching staff has been talking to Andre about. A nice finish. Hoping he goes to the free throw line and knock down the three-point play. Perhaps an example, too, of one of the Achilles heels of Arkansas as they get out rebounded in every game they played this year. Jackson passes up three to Sanders. He'll jack it up. Too strong. Rebound to Gomez, but he can't control it. Bounces it out of bounds. John, you saw Mo Baker grab that rebound. He's one of the best rebounding guards in college basketball. He is outstanding. Melvin got the great look at it. That's a shot that Coach Sutton would like for him to, uh, to take and just happened to miss it. But they got the ball back. They still need to chip away, try to get this into single digits by halftime. Antoine Broxy checking in for the first time today. The 6'10 senior from Tampa did not play against UNKC in the game we did Wednesday night. Also back in Victor Williams. He has it inside. Spins around no good. Broxy offensive force. Puts it 
I talked to the coaching staff, and that's one of the things that they felt like that Roxy could do was come in and give them some size, and that's an instant offense off the bench. It's now a 13-point game, 35-22 Arkansas, under six to go before halftime. Baker on Tatum out front. Cowboys got a guard three-point line. Sullinger inside. Shoots and scores. Little hesitation with the left hand. In the last few games, what Nolan has wanted from his team was either shoot layups or three-pointers, and that's what they've done in the first half today. Double team in the backcourt. Now Gatson will bring it up against Sullinger. Behind the back, and they're going to call a travel. He saw Tatum coming over and held the ball behind his back and just landed. Just a little too fancy. Right off the initial play of the offense, you want to get the ball in motion, get people involved. 37-22 is the score. Dean, Baker with great defense, blocked the shot. Now Sullinger for three. In and out, no good. McFarland tips it and controls the rebound. Victor Williams over to Gadsden, takes the three. Now to McFarland in the lane. Turns and shoots, no good. Roxy had it, had it knocked away. Gadsden now back into Roxy. It's tipped away. Back to Gadsden inside. He leaves it for McFarland, who somehow scoops it and scores. Long pass back down the floor. Dean. They count the basket, and the foul is going to go against Victor Williams. John, the last offensive possession for the Cowboys wasn't pretty, but they are quicker to the basketball. I mean, Farley put the basketball in, but Victor Williams has got to get back for defensive balance, and again, he gave an easy layup. Good awareness by the Razorbacks throwing the ball deep to Brandon Dean. Coach Hutton's not going to be happy with Victor on that particular play. He sits down immediately. That's his second personal foul. And back in is Terrence Crawford. The other thing that Shane Gadsden's going to have to do in the half court is not over penetrate. Take the drive when you have it, but when the double team comes, you've got to find the open man. Dean trying to add the free throw. And he does, and he has 12 in the first half. Three Razorbacks in double figures here in the first half, still with four and a half to go before the break. Argo checks back in for Brandon Dean, who gets a nice hand. 2-2-1 two, two, press. Cowboys scored against this press the last time. Got the ball in the middle. They have numbers. McFarland across to Sanders. Bank shot goes. And just like you talked about, you know, when you attack it like that, you're going to make them pay. Great job against the 2-2-1. Two, two, They're going to have to do a better job against the man when they have the double team pressure. Jones, three. Too strong. Nice defensive forward work there by Terrence Crawford. And he'll give it up to Mo Baker. Baker in the lane. Stripped by Teddy Gibson. Long pass across to Pargo. Three on two. Pargo takes it. Gives it up to Sullinger. Up to Hunter. And good. He's certainly a great-looking freshman, John. Having trouble getting back to his feet. Baker to McFarland who hammers it home with two hands. Mo just got a little impatient the last time down offensively and was stripped of the basketball. And again, it was a turnover. And the Razorbacks converted. Pargo working on Sanders. They're going to call a foul, a hand check on Melvin Sanders. Cowboys have cut that lead to 14. They need a couple of defensive stops. Get that down to single digits. Make a run here right before the half. Then they'll be in a lot better shape to start the second half. Arkansas has had three people in double figures. Cowboys turned the ball over way too many times. They just need to settle down, relax, and play a better half of basketball. Two of the deeper teams in college basketball. Nolan Richardson plays... 11 players, it seems like, and of course we all know about the depth that Oklahoma State has this year. That's why we've seen Broxy early in the game because the depth across the front line, Cowboys have a size advantage and can hurt them. We just haven't been able to get into a half-court set. Pargo at the free throw line. He sat for quite a while after picking up two fouls. Free throw no good. Sanders with a rebound. Chance to cut it to 12, maybe 11 with a three-pointer with under three and a half to go. You see a special set for the Cowboys. They're going to try to get Mo Baker a shot. Crawford. Cleveland. Bumping him as they came around the corner. That's T.J. Cleveland's first foul. The 10th team foul, and 
as you spoke of in the open. Coach, they do foul you quite a bit. Just need Terrence to step up there and knock them down. Score some points while the clock's not running. Crawford only shooting 42% from the line. And that one's really strong. Six six sophomore out of Oklahoma City, McGinnis. Averaging about 13 and a half minutes a game. Second one's good. The strong athlete that uh, hurt his knee last year slowed him down, and he had a finger injury earlier this fall. But he's certainly a young man that they need to help coming off that bench. He's an athlete strong, can give them scoring. Time out on the floor. Oklahoma State chipping away at that lead. They're down by 13. You're watching OSU Cowboys Sports Network Basketball. As we come back to Little Rock, OSU with 18 first-half turnovers. John, what has really hurt the Cowboys? They're averaging 15 turnovers a game, already committed 18 in the first half, but the points off turnovers, 23 by the Razorbacks, and you see what happens here. Mo Baker goes in, gets stripped, the Hogs will convert on the other end. And there's J.J. Sullinger, two of his points. We come back to live action. You see Mo Baker coming away after Arkansas misses a three-point effort. Terrence Crawford driving baseline. But they're going to call a travel. Shuffled his feet once he got underneath the basket. That's the second time that Terrence has driven the baseline with nowhere to go. The Arkansas defense is quick. They react and help. They're going to have to swing the ball around the perimeter. Steal out front by Baker. As he took it away from Gennaro Fargo. And then right in front of us. Got knocked out of bounds, and they're calling it off of Fargo, OSU's basketball. Great on-the-ball defense here by Mo Bacon. Got a chance to cut into that lead right here. 13-point lead for Arkansas. And you see the three-point shooting. Arkansas red hot. Meanwhile, a miss, but there's Andre Williams with an offensive board. Baker, 18-footer. No good. Andre can't control this one. Fargo with a rebound, and here comes Arkansas. Arkansas is in a half-court zone, a little impatient for the Cowboys at that point time, although they got Bo Baker two shots. TJ Cleveland, nice head and shoulder fake, can't make the shot. Baker on the other end, nice pass. Gibson gets up and blocks it off the board. Down the floor, it's taken back away by Melvin Sanders. Victor Williams is going to be called for a charge. As T.J. Cleveland was right in front of him. Well, the last four possessions have been a little sloppy. We saw Mo Baker get two shots on one end. The guards did a great job of rebounding. Victor found Mo. He thought it was goaltending. They blocked the shot. Then they came back. The Hogs threw it away, and then Victor charges. Just one of those unfortunate meetings, more than anything else. Victor's in just a little bit of a hurry. He just needs to slow down, keep his head up. For Victor Williams, that is his third foul. He has to sit. Frederick Yonzian also on the bench with three. Cleveland, 4-3. No good. Broxy with a rebound. Broxy's done a nice job since coming in on the offensive end as well as the defensive boards. Sanders inside to Andre Williams. And they'll call a little hand check down low. And that's on Teddy Gibson. John, this is the fourth possession that the Cowboys have had to cut into this lead in 42 to 29. Again, they're trying to get that in single digits by half. Andre Williams back at the free throw line. This time gets the first one to fall. The foul on Gibson, his second. Andre's playing with some energy. He's demanding the ball down low, playing physical, going to the glass. And that's what the coaching staff wants and needs from him. Charles Tatum having checked back in for the Razorbacks. Two for two for Andre at the line this time, and it's a, an 11-point ball game with a minute 35 to go before halftime. Here's where we need a defensive stop. Tatum dribbles around the key. Gibson now. Brandon Dean back in the ball game. To Carl Baker in the lane. Can't get it to go. Bad shot, rebound to Gatson. Comes across half court with Baker. Capos were lucky on that particular play because we allowed middle dribble. 
Sanders, big master. Melvin Sanders hesitated, saw he was wide open, and knocked down the three, and it's an eight-point ball game with under a minute to go before halftime. Gibson drives, splits two defenders, falls to the floor, and they will call a foul on Shane Gatson. I think the official bailed him out there. It looked like to me that Shane was straight up. Gadsden's second foul. Eddie Sutton asking John Clockerty exactly why Gadsden picked up a foul there. Free throw for Gibson is good. A lot of fouls in the first half on both sides, John. Both teams have been in the double bonus. In other words, exceeding the 10 team foul total for the last two or three minutes. Gibson's second free throw too strong. Sanders comes down strong with the rebound. Cowboys are starting to assert themselves on the defensive board, not giving up second shots. There's Andre Williams with it. Dribbles into the lane. Shoots an air ball. He was challenged there by Jones. Not a good shot. Not a good offensive possession. And we've got an offensive foul call away from the ball. That one's going to go against Michael Jones as he set a screen and slid over and knocked Melvin Sanders to the floor. Should be uh, two shots on the other end. And we walk to the other end. Sanders will shoot two. And here's another look at it. There's Jones sliding out. And that's a... Uh, that will get called if you're right in front of the referee. That's right, and you have to give the defender a step, a chance uh, to come down. Big free throws here by Melvin. On the last possession, certainly Andre has really done a nice job, but looking a little bit too impatient on that particular play. They would like to have him a little closer to the basket to get a better chance to shoot the ball in the hole or get a dunk. Coach Sutton talking with Williams about that right now. Melvin Sanders, his ninth point of the day. McFarland and check back in for Andre, and here comes J.J. Sullinger back in the game for Michael Jones. John, the Cowboys have not played very well in the first half. I think that's obvious to everyone. However, if they can get to the locker room, this lead in single digits, I think the coaching staff's going to be happy, regroup, make some adjustments, come back to the second half. Arkansas looks like they will hold it for the last shot. Shot clock is off, and we're under 20 seconds. Seven-point ball game. Sullinger with it out front. Right near half court. Need someone to make a big defensive play right here and have a stop, maybe make a steal. Look for Sullinger or Brandon Dean to make the end. A near steal out front. Ball on the floor. Ivan McFarlane almost came up with it. We've got a jump ball situation, and OSU will get the basketball with two and a half seconds to go. With them to get the ball to uh, Mo Baker and let him go and penetrate. They're going to try to throw it in the front court if they can. Sanders will inbound. Finds Baker. Mo, two, three dribbles. Shoots up a floater and won't go. But it could have been a lot worse. OSU down 22 points at one stage in the first half has cut that deficit to only seven. We're at halftime at Altel Arena here in Little Rock. It's Arkansas 43. Oklahoma State 36. We'll be back with halftime activities after this. You're watching OSU Cowboys Sports Network Basketball. Getting some easy layups there. You mentioned Arkansas from the three-point line. At one point, they were five of eight and then cooled off just a bit. OSU winning the rebound advantage. That's not a surprise, though, is it? No, it's not. The only thing that's disappointing is those offensive rebounds that were given up for nine points in the ball game. The one stat you have to look at, the three-point line. Arkansas is going to shoot a lot of three-pointers. You must defend the three-point line in the second half. But the big stat there, just circle it, turnovers, 20 for the Cowboys. They're averaging 15 for the year, but certainly did not want to have 20 in one half. But give the Razorback defense credit. And nothing short of amazing, Coach, that you have 20 turnovers and a half, and you're only down seven points on the road. We talked about that. Those are some areas that you've really got to feel good about and take some positive. Certainly, you're going to constructively criticize at halftime. But there's 20 more minutes to play. 
The Cowboys had a 26-13 run in the last eight minutes of the first half, so they came back. They're the number six ranked team in the country. They have one of the great coaches in college basketball. They'll come back and play better. I thought their defense after the initial seven minutes was very, very good. They complimented by defensive board play. Broxy came off and rebounded the ball very well. We still haven't got Frederick off to the start. We need to. He got in foul trouble. Well, there you see Shane Gadsden over penetrating. Pargo gets it on the other end. Maurice Baker leaves his feet. Sellinger, a great head pass down the floor to Dean, who had some run outs. Here you just see Pargo just getting a nice jump shot. That's a great player who's got a lot of confidence right now. Sellinger has just played outstanding. There's a nice curl move and a jump shot. Bo Baker with a good steal. This is good. Great pass. Melvin ran the floor. Bo took the defense away. Roxy came off the bench. Offensive rebound and put back. Right there, up and in. Cowboys dominated the board. There's Melvin in transition. We're going to need more offensive production in the second half. There's a nice three-pointer by Melvin Sanders. But you've got to get Mo Baker involved, Freddie Gunsin, in order for the Cowboys to have a chance to win this game in the second half. Two senior leaders. Once again, we'll remind you that uh, a couple of Cowboys in foul trouble. Frederick Yanzian has three, as does Victor Williams. Two of the OSU starters sat for a great while of the first half. Yanzian only played eight minutes in the first half. Victor Williams, 13 minutes. All in all, though, considering the fact they were down 32 to 10 at one point, Cowboys have fought their way back into this ball game and trailed by seven as we start the second half. Look for the pressure half-court defense, intensity by the Cowboys, and then good offensive set on the other end. Sullinger, Gomez, Pargo, Dean, and Alonzo Lane starting the second half for the Razorbacks. Gomez. Gomez can shoot that shot if he's set. Fred's going to have to come out and challenge. His first basket of the game. Back to a nine-point lead for Arkansas. Victor Williams, Mo Baker, Melvin Sanders, Frederick Yonzian, and Ivan McFarland in the starting five, starting the second half for the Cowboys. Baker working on Gomez. Now down low to Yonzian. He's double teamed. Bad pass stolen by Gomez. And he tries to get it ahead to Sullinger. It heads up play by Baker, who taps it out of bounds. Coach Sutton had isolated his two seniors on one side, Fred and Mo, the turnover to start the second half. Not what the Cowboys wanted. Not often you have one of your big men leading your team in steals, but that was the third of the game for Gomez. They're certainly active with their hands, uh, getting a lot of loose balls, knocking them away, and they're very strong. They're, they're just, this is an athletic team, but they're very strong. McFarland slaps away the Gomez effort, but he's called for goaltending. And you notice there, Yanzian with three fouls, kind of let Gomez just go right around him. He didn't want to pick up number four. Five straight points uh, for the Razorbacks. What you'd like to do is come out and get the five points yourself and really put pressure on uh, Arkansas. But Arkansas starting the second half much like they did the first. Back to a double-digit lead, 47-36 Arkansas. Baker. In the front court, and again being pushed way out near half court. Baker drives baseline with Dean on him. Over to Sanders. He'll shoot a three. In and out, no good. Lane with a strong rebound. I'm not sure that's the shot that uh, Coach Sutton wanted Melvin to take off the move. Parker with a great move. Can't get the shot to fall. And Gomez goes down in pain. Looks like his left ankle. May have rolled that ankle or stepped on someone's foot and uh, grabbed that rebound. And McFarland kind of held up. It looked like he knew exactly. He stepped on Gomez's foot. Stepped on his left uh, ankle and he rolled it. That, uh, that certainly hurts. Here's the press that the Cowboys had trouble with in the first half. The man-to-man, -the, -man, the double team, but they do a nice job here. Look for Moe to be more aggressive, attack, get to the glass, or better on the mid-range game than we were in the first half. Cowboys setting up the offense. Victor Williams in the lane. Nice stop. Very good play by Victor. He knocks it down and it's back to nine. Was able to create space off that power dribble. Lane with McFarlane all over it. Picks it up right at Pargo and Victor Williams almost picked up his fourth foul and now it's out of bounds off of Pargo and OSU gets the basketball. Lane not a very good ball handler. Great pressure applied by Ivan on the point of the ball and the Cowboys come up with a steal. So a turnover for OSU. 
And they can get back within seven with a basket here. On the baseline, Mo Baker gets away from Dean, knocks down the 15-footer. Great special call by the coaching staff. Got Mo Baker free off the double screen on the baseline. Had an easy mid-range jumper. We've had two mid-range shots, but really important to start the second half. Victor and then Maurice down the baseline. Argo out front. Andre Williams jumps out to help defend. Bounce pass inside to Gomez. He looks for someone. Andre Williams on him. Andre, good defense there. McFarland tips the ball around and comes out of there with it. And now the Cowboys on the break. Over to Baker on the left side. Easy layup. John all created by defense on the other end. Ivan McFarland came over, gave great help, captured the defensive board play, gave it out to outlet pass. Nice play to Victor, and he made a great decision giving the ball to Mo. Cowboys are fired up. They're within five. A timeout for Arkansas. 47-42. The Razorbacks lead it. Three minutes in, the Cowboys continue to make up some ground. A lot of basketball left to be played now. You see the last three baskets. Victor has gotten a uh, shot inside the paint. Mo got the shot on the baseline. They got the run out there. But look at this nice pass. I'm not sure that uh, Ivan knew where he was throwing that ball right there. He threw it to uh, Victor. He just happened to be there. Certainly he was off balance and threw it across his body. Well, Nolan Richardson trying to inspire his troops at this point. This is only the third game the Razorbacks have played in Altel Arena. And the first game here in two years. They come in 2-0. and oh, And it's only the third time that OSU and Arkansas have played in Little Rock. Of course, the other three meetings, the last time they played in Little Rock, back in 1950. Coach Sutton and uh, Nolan have met in Little Rock before when Nolan was at the University of Tulsa. Coach Sutton was at uh, Arkansas. Nolan had that great uh, team with Steve Smith. Uh, we had a nice team. We were fortunate to win in the old building down here, Barton Coliseum. But uh, this is a good rivalry game. One of the things that's happened here in the second half, John, is the Hawks came out and scored the first five points, got the crowd into the game, not as much at the start of the game, and now the Cowboys have come back, and they've scored six quick points. They've really put the crowd back in the seats, and the crowd has not been a factor to start the second half. It should pass along. There is a little pocket of orange-clad fans across the way. They made the trip. Again, they sold out Altel Arena. More than 16,000 people into this fine facility in Little Rock. Arkansas puts it back into play. 47-42, Razorbacks in front. Top of the key, Sollinger harassed by Baker, and Mo almost had a steal. Now Sollinger on the dribble, drives in, tough play, loose ball, collision out front, and they're going to call Melvin Sanders for the foul as he slammed into Pargo. Looked like a loose ball situation. That's one of those plays where you almost just let them play on. Everyone was going after the, uh, the basketball. Certainly no advantage uh, there, but they did get Melvin for the foul. They're trying to free Brandon Dean up along uh, the baseline, setting some double screens along the baseline. They'd like to get the ball in his hand. Great steal right here by Victor Williams. Easy run out. Great anticipation by Victor Williams. It's a three-point ball game. Got really high in the passing lane and then was able to run through the pass, keep his inside hand out, knock the ball up to where you can go down and make the basket. Ivan McFarland with another tremendous rebound. Off the miss by Pargo. Bounce pass to Sanders. Can't get the lay in and now a late whistle. And they're going to call the foul and, and perhaps the OSU bench helped pick up that foul. Well, Melvin's got to make that. I think he got fouled on the transition, but he's got to go ahead and make that shot to begin with. Well, here you go, and he's uh, obviously bumped on the way up, missed the layup, and the OSU bench went nuts, and then the whistle came. Well, they, they're getting, they, I thought the foul was going to be uh, against Andre. It looks like they, one official did. The crowd got loud. But Melvin so went ahead and made that basket. That's what you call finishing in transition, finishing in traffic. But right now, the Cowboys have momentum. Blake Edens into the game for J.J. Sullinger. Sanders hits the first free throw. Looking to make this a one-point game. It's short. McFarland with a tip. Couldn't control it. Gomez comes out of there with it. And now the Razorbacks across half court. Pargo working on Victor Williams, and Victor has just picked up his fourth foul. That's not, that's not a good play by Victor. He knows he's already got three fouls. He's late on getting over the screen and reaches behind. Not the kind of defense that Coach Sutton coaches. 
Shane Gatson will check in in a moment for the Cowboys, and Victor Williams will have to take a seat with 16 minutes to go. John, I thought Victor was really doing a nice job of running the club, getting the ball to the right people in transition, playing tough defense. That's an ill-advised foul. You're going to make some hustle fouls, but certainly you don't want to make that foul and take yourself out of the game with 16 minutes to go. Sanders will pick up Pargo now on the defensive end. Pargo, nice dribble, pulls up, three, knocks it down. He got in rhythm on that crossover. And it's back to a five-point ball game now. Sanders finally inbounds it. Up to McFarland. McFarland had it poked away, but right to Baker. No, pulls up, shoots, knocks it down. So that was a nice shot with Lane right in his face. Quickly back the other way. Pargo, another three. He knocks out another three. Melvin's going to have to find Pargo not only in transition, but in the half court. Not worry about help defense. He's got to stay right on Pargo. Baker breaks it with a dribble. Same spot. A little strong this time. Gomez over the back. Here's Andre Williams. He's fouled by Brandon Dean. Great effort by Ivan and Andre inside on the offensive glass. This is an area where the Cowboys can really hurt the Razorbacks. A whistle and a timeout on the floor. 15 14 to go. The Arkansas advantage is six points, 53 47. We'll take a timeout as well and be back with more. You're watching the Cowboy Sports Television Network. Six quick points here in the second half. I thought he got undercut on his right leg on that shot. He's gotten off to a good start. Here we see the Cowboys doing a great job getting the basketball inside. Is it Brandon Dean who may Brand be down? Brandon Dean on the floor holding his, looks like his hamstring. That was a super pass from Shane Ganson uh, down inside to Melvin Sanders. Great call into the timeout on the inbounds play. Nolan Richardson giving John Clockerty an earful too as he stands over. I think it's okay Dean. to come out and check on your player. I don't think you get a, a, an official's clinic uh, from the uh, referees though. Dean is up and walking off the floor under his own power. I think he slipped. Uh, Nolan said there's a slick spot on the floor and Brandon may have went down. It was still an excellent set by the Cowboys coming out of the timeout. One of the things you always wonder about in an arena like this where they had a hockey game last night is will you have problems once things heat up in the arena whether the floor will become slick. You haven't had that problem but Dean did slip there. We saw a game earlier in the year in the uh, ACC Big Ten Challenge uh, where Michigan State and Virginia had the game and uh, the game was called because it was too dangerous for the players and officials. Sanders still working on Pargo. Pargo tries to throw it inside, tipped away by McFarland. Melvin picked him up higher on the floor, did a great job of staying on the uh, floor and did not take his head fix. Four-point ball game. Inside lane, can't control it. They're going to say it was tipped out of his hands. That's a defensive breakdown. Lane was wide open for the dunk. So they'll get it again. Blake Eddins inbounding to Gomez. Looking for Pargo. And it's stolen by Sanders, but he was standing on the sideline. Cowboys defense has really got the Hogs standing around. I think it's going to be an advantage. We talked about the half-court offense of the Razorbacks. Certainly, I think the Cowboy defense still applying a lot of pressure and can really make it difficult for the Hogs to score. T.J. Cleveland in the ballgame. Now Parga way outside. As I say that, he steps out two steps further and then knocks down another three. He has 21 points this afternoon and the advantage back to seven. What it was at halftime for the Razorbacks. Shane Gadsden. That young man is playing with tremendous confidence. Mo Baker with an answer in the corner for three. That'll put the crowd back in their seats and continue to give the Cowboys confidence. Their star player has got off to a great start in the second half. Baker has 14 to lead OSU. Back out front, Gomez. And now they're going to call a foul away from the ball. And Sanders holding on to Pargo just a bit. He's certainly trying to deny Pargo the basketball, but you don't want to make a foul 25 feet from the basket if you can help it. That's the third foul on Melvin Sanders, but he stays in the game against Pargo. Right up, right up. Right up. Down on the low block. 
Alonzo Lane kicks it outside to Gomez. 18-footer banked it in, and that's normally not the place you use the board when you mean to use the board. He may have gotten away with shuffling his feet right when he caught the basketball. Double teaming. Gadsden in the corner. Got to get it out there. They're going to double team the corners. Passing inside. Baker, bad decision. Tipped away by Gomez, and now a foul down low. And they'll give it to Maurice Baker. John, that's one of those unforced turnovers where you leave your feet and throw the ball across your body. Not a good basketball play. Moe tried to do a little bit too much to create. Well, Mo picks up his first foul. It's the Cowboys' fourth team foul. Arkansas with the basketball. Sanders with three fouls trying to guard Pargo. Pargo on the baseline. Leans in and comes to, has the ball knocked away, but it got away from him, so he was able to keep control of it. Gomez can't get it to go. Follow, and now a whistle inside. And that time, Gomez just out-hustled the Cowboys to the basketball. Andre Williams is called for the foul, his first. Melvin did a tremendous job defensively on Pargo. In fact, Pargo jumped into him, knocked the ball loose, got it back. And then when the ball was shot by Gomez, somehow everyone's got to collapse and you've got to get that rebound. Instead, Gomez going to the free throw line. Trying to expand Arkansas's six-point lead. First one is good. Gomez's first free throw attempt of the day. He comes in shooting 77.8% from the line. Coach Sutton getting some fresh people into the game with Broxy coming in, Crawford, and also Fred back in. They're going to need some production out of Fred in the second half. Three fouls is what Yanzian comes in with. Broxy with the rebound of the free throw miss. It's a seven-point game. Bo Baker pushing it up behind the back. Inside, off the board, no good. Broxy offensive rebound, and he's hammered from behind. And they'll call it on either Eddins or Lane. You, you had your choice there. Well, Antoine came in the first half and did a nice job. But look at this rebound on the uh, defensive end and right back on the offensive end. He's involved in the play. That's what you like to see coming off the bench where people will come in and elevate and make plays. Roxy's first free throw, no good. The foul was on Eddins, his first. The third team foul on Arkansas. And now Eddins will take a seat and J.J. Sullinger who had 15 in the first half. He's back in. For this lineup, Shane is going to have to help Mo in handling the basketball, distributing it, and relieving pressure. Six-point ball game again. 13 minutes to go. Lane to Gomez. Lost control of it. And Baker comes away with it. Into the lane. Mo is stripped by T.J. Cleveland. And back the other way we go. I thought Maurice had Shane on the outside. Three-pointer by Pargo, no good. Terrence Crawford comes away with it, but he's going to be called for standing on the sideline right in front of the Arkansas bench. Still a good hustle play by Terrence to go after and get the ball. The last time down, when Mo had the ball, I thought he had Shane on an easy layup. He didn't see him. Then was stripped from behind. Arkansas does a good job of getting back once the initial flow of the ball gets ahead of them. Argo with it out front. Now Shane Gadsden guarding him. T.J. Cleveland working on Mo Baker. Baseline, lost control of it. It goes out of bounds and turns over to OSU. Good half-court defense. 59-53, Arkansas in front. They inbound it to Yanzian. You see the turnover, 23 to 15. You got to get the ball out of there. Maurice again in the double team, trying to throw the ball across his body. We get the foul call there, and there's going to be a lot of fouls in this game, but you still must be strong with the basketball. T.J. Cleveland's second personal foul. And just got a little too aggressive. Razorbacks really run to the ball. When you get the ball below free throw line extended on either wing, they're going to double team it. Victor Williams back in with his four fouls. Brandon Dean checks back in for Janelle Pargo. Going to give Maurice a little bit of a blow right there. He come up to a great start uh, offensively. They give him a little blow and come back in. 
Arkansas is going to a zone. Baseline, Broxy, they'll swing it, try to swing it back around. They try, they try, excuse me, John, they try not to allow you to reverse the basketball. They try to keep it on one side of the floor. They want to trap the corner and also trap the ring. The wing, it'll be very important for the high post in the offense to step out, relieve pressure so we can swing it back to the weak side. Cowboys retain possession. They say Cleveland got a piece of it. Replay shows otherwise. Broxy kicks it out. Wide open, gets three. In and out, no good. Gomez the rebound. Nice inside out play. It gave Shane a nice set up and look at the basket. Just didn't fall. Gomez fakes the shot. Dean inside. Had to double clutch it. Shot an air ball. That's great defense right there. Timeout on the floor. 11.40 to go. OSU trails by six, 59-53. We're back with more in Little Rock in a moment. You're watching OSU Cowboys Sports Network Basketball. Back at Altel Arena in Little Rock, the Arkansas Razorbacks leading the sixth rank OSU Cowboys, 59-53. Nolan Richardson's team lost three games so far this season. Cowboys have got to have a man in the middle against this press. Crawford in the lane to Gadsden. Pulls up, shoots, no good. Tipped out of there. Gadsden hustling for it, but cannot control it, and it goes over to Arkansas. One of the things that's going to have to happen down the stretch in the last 11 minutes of the ball game, we've got to get Frederick involved in the offense. He only has three points. He's one of the players that we highlighted. Certainly, Moe has come out with some offense. He's back in the game, but Frederick's got to get involved offensively. And if you're just joining us, Yonzian with three quick fouls in the first half. And a big reason why he hasn't had more offensive success. Brandon Dean out to Sullinger. Sullinger shooting a three. Air ball. T.J. Cleveland tries to save it. He was out of bounds already. OSU will take over. Excellent half-court defense by the Cowboys, really challenging the shooters and also pushing them further away from the three-point line. Against this press, you've got to have somebody in the middle. There comes the big fella right there. Jan Zian helps get it across half-court. Terrence Crawford to Shane Gadsden. In the corner to Baker. Down low baseline, Antoine Broxy. Now Baker back out front. Major back in his own, look for Fred to pop open high. Baseline, Broxy again on the other side. Ten on the shot clock. Now another turnover as Jan Zian and Baker collided with each other. Sullinger driving the lane, laying it in. So we had two post guys that were in the corner. We had Antoine and Frederick in there. You just can't. They were too close together. Miscommunication. Coach Eddie Sutton wants a timeout. It's a 30-second timeout for the Cowboys, and they trail by eight, 61-53 as we near the halfway point of the second half. That basket by Sullinger, his first of the second half, he has 17 points. Let's see if they're going to be in a man or a zone. Gadsden with the ball. They're going to extend their 2-3 zone and trap. High post, pass to Baker, three-pointer falls. A nice pass. He got that shot because he went to the high post and into the wing. Good inside-out look. Five-point ball game. The Cowboys have been as close as two here in the second half at 47-45. Baseline, Dean, bounce pass to Lane. Up and under, no good. Tipped around. Gomez comes up with it again. And Melvin Sanders has just picked up, I believe, his fourth foul. Now, first to Melvin Sanders, his fourth personal foul. So Sanders and Victor Williams, each with four for the Cowboys, with 9.47 to play. Frederick was down low, challenging the shot. Ivan's got to box out Gomez coming down the middle. Gomez knocks down the first free throw. Larry Sackle checks in for Alonzo Lane in the Arkansas lineup. Gomez with nine points as the second free throw goes. And it's back to a seven-point lead for Arkansas. Baker gets up in the air and is lucky he had Gadsden right next to him. Certainly don't want to leave your feet to pass the basketball. I, I post you up. 
Baker lost control of the ball, and he's tipped out of bounds, and a timeout. There's that rule again, Coach. T.J. Cleveland grabbed the ball as he was flying out of bounds, looked at the referee, and hollered timeout. He has granted the timeout, and Arkansas wants another 30-second break here. 9.29 to go now, 63-56. You know, that rule came from a lot of the NBA action that a lot of whole time. Either way, it's Arkansas's basketball. Of course, it's a little easier over here. We have the benefit of replay. The officials got to make a bang, bang decision. But uh, I think that's a rule that the officials would like to see change because it puts a lot of pressure on them. And it's a very unpopular rule as it was against uh, uh, in, uh, in Northwestern State on Monday night in Gallagher Island. C.J. Cleveland inside, wide open to Larry Satchel. Jan Cian tried to take the charge and was unsuccessful. That was all created by penetration with Cleveland. Frederick came over to help and left Satchel wide open. And that's where the high guard has got to rotate down and cover on the backside. T.J. Cleveland called for a blocking foul here. He wasn't quite there. His third foul and the 15th foul on Arkansas. See, three orange shirts around. Cleveland, we just don't do a good job rotating on the backside. That's the worst place you can inbound the basketball. And a steal, and now another steal back by Mo Baker. He drives, bounce pass, and a pretty one. Over to Shane Gadsden, and a whistle. Gomez jogs halfway up to half court because he thought he had a clean block. John, on that inbounds pass, Frederick just can't take one dribble and stop right there because you have the sideline, you have the backcourt line, and two defenders, and just give you some extra help. Shane did a nice job of attacking the glass, going to the free throw line. Good pass by Maurice. Gomez may indeed have had a clean block. They called the foul on Satchel, his second. Gatson at the free throw line. Shane, 76.9% on the year. First one goes. He's a very good free throw shooter and an excellent ball handler. That's why he can be on the court late in the half. He gets both of them and it's back now to a seven point game, 65-58, Arkansas in front. Sullinger, Baker guarding him. Run those guards off two screens on the base. That's a great hustle play. And a jump ball called. Long the Cowboys. Yeah. That's why knowing the possession arrow is so important because when the ball goes on the floor, if you'll dive on it and capture the ball, you make a big play for your team, just like a turnover. Good job by Mo. Oh. What, what, what the Hogs are doing, they're putting two postmen on the baseline and running those guards, Dean, Sullinger, off the baseline to get shots. Got to pick that ball up in traffic. And they're going to call it travel on Victor Williams as he tried to dribble through traffic, and he was claiming he got hacked on the arms, but... It's another turnover. John, you just can't dribble against pressure like that. The ball moves faster than people. you got to spot up, have good spacing. Now, if it's a one-on-one, -on -one, you can certainly beat them. If you have two or three guys chasing you, you've got to pass the basketball to the open man and not dribble through traffic, as you mentioned. Victor Williams coming immediately back out. He's had a frustrating day in foul trouble with four fouls. And what that play does, we just had a great defensive play by Maurice Baker going on the floor and getting the tie up. Now you have a chance to cut down the seven point lead. You come down, over dribble, turn the basketball over. Uh, turnovers have plagued the Cowboys all day. Argo back in the game for the Razorbacks. Melvin Sanders on him. Melvin, of course, with four fouls. And now a hand check on Maurice Baker. That is Mo's second foul. It's a big matchup right there, Mo on Sullinger. Arkansas already in the bonus situation here with uh, 8 minutes and 33 seconds to go. Sullinger with 18 points now. Certainly got a smooth shot. As we mentioned, a true freshman out of Ohio. No good this time, but Farland goes and gets the ball. Gadsden, Baker, McFarland, Yanzian, and Sanders. Back to man-to-man -man defense. Bounce pass back door, knocked away by Dean. Brandon Dean too quick that time. 
They were trying to set up a backdoor cut for Maurice Baker, and Shane just made a bad decision on the pass. Larry Satchel from 18 feet, no good. That, that's the shot that Nolan Richardson wanted. Gatson back the other way. is stripped away by Brandon Dean, and his foot slides out of bounds, and OSU will keep the basketball. John, the Cowboys will give Satchel that shot from the perimeter, but the last three times down, we've had two turnovers, and then they're almost a turnover, and they still, and the Hawks stepped out of bounds. We've got to get some shots at the basket. Quick shot by Melvin Sanders is short. Jan Zian with an offensive rebound, and he says, let's set it up. Good leadership by Fred. He knows Coach Sutton wants to set up the offense. Double team on the ball. Loose ball. Sanders going back after it. Now on the floor, we've got another jump ball situation. And Arkansas will get possession. And we have a timeout on the floor. 7.46 to go. Arkansas in front by eight. 66-58. We're back to Little Rock with more in a moment. You're watching the Cowboys sports here in Little Rock. The Razorbacks clinging to an eight-point lead. Here the double team comes to the blind side. And just as we talked about Maurice Baker getting on the floor. Arkansas gets on the floor, the possession arrow. The last five possessions have not been good for the Cowboys. The guards for Oklahoma State are going to have to do a better job of handling pressure. By far the highest turnover total for Oklahoma State this year with 28, and that has translated into 30 points for Arkansas and a 14-point edge there for the Razorbacks, and there's the game. Tells the whole story. Backdoor lob. And a little high and a turnover for Arkansas. That was set up in the timeout. I'm sure Coach Richard and his, his staff set that uh, play up. A bad pass by Pargo. Dean with great leaping ability, but still he's only 6'2", 6'1". Pargo off the loose ball for three. That's too strong. Tip up by Sullinger is no good. And here comes OSU. Oklahoma State's going to have to recognize when Arkansas is in the 2-2-1 like they are now or whether in the man press on the ball. Sanders. Now Baker. And they'll set it up with Gadsden. Oklahoma State will be in the one and one the next foul by the Razorbacks. They've got to be strong with the ball here. Baker, top of the key. Find Sanders in the corner for three. In and out, no good. Yonzia with an offensive board and put back and foul. He needs to be productive for the Cowboys down the stretch. He's a senior. He's a veteran. He's been in these type of situations. Great offensive rebound. Complete the three-point play with this opportunity at the free throw line. No one boxes him out. That's, as we mentioned in the first half, the Achilles heel for Arkansas. And something else, he did a great job. Once he got that offensive rebound, he kept the ball high. Didn't bring it down where they could slap it away. Kept it high. Put it back up. Has a chance to complete the three-point play. He's got to become involved in this offense in the half court. The Cowboys with a two-to-one edge in rebounds today. And Jan Zian at the free throw line trying to make this a five-point game. The board was an area that the coaching staff thought they could dominate in, and they have. And I don't think anyone expected them to turn the basketball over or play as poor at the guard position as they have, and they have some outstanding guards. 66-61, Arkansas in front. Dean, J.J. Sullinger. Maurice Baker on Sullinger, who has 18, almost stolen, and now a slip out front by Pargo. Sanders has it, should have a dunk. He hammers it home, and it's a three-point game. John, that was created by great on-the-ball defense by Maurice Baker, and then Melvin comes up with a terrific defensive play and dunk at the other end. Every possession is going to be important down the stretch. Cowboys have been within two here in the second half, and that's as close as it's been. Pargo in the lane, back outside. Dean with a wide-open three. If you're assigned to a three-point shooter like Pargo or Dean, you cannot leave them. You must stay with them. Cowboys were caught in a help situation because of a high post screen. They penetrated and went to the outside. Coach Sutton wants a 30-second timeout, and, and I'll tell you this, fans in Tulsa might have seen the Arkansas-Tulsa game at the Reynolds Center, and Dean did the exact same thing to the Golden Hurricane earlier in the year. Well, he's just a terrific shooter. A, a lot of pressure down, the, down in the corners. Here's a look at the uh, coaches' poll. Oklahoma State sixth in both polls, and you see Virginia, who beat Georgetown earlier this week, uh, unbeaten as well as is Duke. 
Cowboys in danger of suffering their first loss this season. Still plenty of time in a six-point ball game. They break the press. Stone press that time, 2-2-1. Fred, high post, nice pass. McFarland puts it home. Good coaching out of the timeout. They went to the zone, press. Cowboys did a good job attacking. The key was getting the ball to Fred at the high post. Made a nice pass down to Ivan McFarland. Here's a turnover. Bad pass by Gomez as he looked for Pargo, who cut to the basket. In that situation, Shane shouldn't have given up on that ball. If he thought he could get it, then he had Ivan and Melvin ahead of him. If you can go capture the basketball, get it, don't wait, let it go out of bounds. Again, a chance for the Cowboys to get within two, perhaps one with a three-pointer. It's been a sloppy day for OSU. Victor can't kill his dribble that far from the basket. He's got to keep his dribble alive, and that's what will happen. Now he goes to the free throw line. The previous play, he killed his dribble too far out, and it allows the defense to really come out and smother you. Margo has picked up his third personal foul, and Victor Williams, who's an 82% free throw shooter, goes to the free throw line. He's 0 for 1 on the afternoon. The backcourt for Oklahoma State is much better than they played this afternoon. They're still in the ball game and have a chance to win this basketball game. It'll be very important for Victor, Moe, and Melvin to really handle the ball down the stretch. Check that. He was 1 for 2, now 2 for 3 from the line today. And now 3 for 4, and once again, it's a two-point ball game. 69-67 Razorbacks. Look for Arkansas to try to get Pargo or Dean open on the baseline. 30-second timeout called by the Razorbacks with 5.24 to go. And you mentioned that uh, Victor Williams and Melvin Sanders, among those needed to take care of the basketball, they're both saddled with four fouls as we approach the last five and a half minutes of this game. Cowboys from here, of course, their next game will be in the All-College Classic in Oklahoma City next Saturday against Ball State. But our, our upcoming television games, Cowboy Sports Properties, Coach Dickey and I will be in Waco on January 8th for a Big 12 contest with Dave Bliss's Baylor Bears that evening. Then in February 20th, the place they haven't had a whole lot of success, the Irwin Center in Austin. Tough place to play against Texas. And then a home game on March the 2nd against Texas A&M. And, of course, you can see it statewide on your local affiliates. Look for Arkansas to try to create some one-on-one -on -one situations where they can take people who have four fouls, try to force them to play defense. Ball was kicked out of bounds. The fresh shot clock for the Razorbacks. Brandon Dean with the basketball. Victor Williams on him. High post screen. Good hedge. Good step out. Where Ivan stepped out and helped uh, Victor out when Dean came across on the high post screen by Gomez. Dean still with a basketball dribbling. 15 on the shot clock. Cargo. They're going to scream for him. Sanders with four fouls. There's McFarland picking him up. Six on the shot clock. Cargo will go one on one. Baseline. Tries to dish it to Sollinger. Gets him. Nice little lean in move away from the defender, and Sollinger gets the basket. That was all created by penetration by Pargo. He had Ivan McFarland realize that he had a bigger guy and could take him, took him to the basket, the help came, he dished it off. 71-67, Arkansas by four. Victor Williams is mauled by Sullinger as Victor drove around him. Victor's doing a good job of being aggressive and attacking that pressure and trying to create a help situation and getting to the middle with his head up. You see him beat Sullinger with the dribble and J JJ just grabs a hold of him. Second foul on Sullinger. Victor's doing a better job of keeping his head up and being aware of where the defense happens to be and also where his teammates are. First free throw good. TJ Cleveland checking in for JJ Sullinger. Three point game and in the first half we were sitting here looking at a 22 point deficit and the Cowboys still not where they want to be, but certainly in a lot better shape. It was 32 to 10 Razorbacks at one point, about halfway through the first half, before the Cowboys cut that deficit to seven, 43-36 at halftime. Four big free throws in a row for Victor Williams. Two-point ball game, 4.15 to go. T.J. Cleveland baseline up and under, and a whistle and a foul will be called on Ivan McFarland as T.J. Cleveland got away from his defender. 
Uh, Maurice was a little bit late getting out of there. The Cowboys have changed defensive assignments. They put Victor on Sullinger. He got Moe on Cleveland. Moe was late in getting out. When Ivan came across, he didn't seal the play and made the foul. Second foul on McFarland. Cleveland at the free throw line. 81% free throw shooter misses the first. Defensive board play is always important, but certainly at a free throw situation, you never want the offensive team to get it back. So everyone boxing out, someone stepping in and getting the shooter is very important in these situations. Coach Sutton realizing that put Andre Williams in the game for defensive purposes as well as some experience on the offensive end. Carl Baker also checking in for Arkansas. Cleveland's second free throw. That's good. And the Razorbacks lead 72-69, 4.16 to go. Man-to-man -man press where the double team comes. This is the press we've had trouble with. We need to attack it. Swing around, and Victor Williams will wait for defenders to fall back. Stripped, and he, get he gets the ball back. Now it's on the floor, and a jump ball situation. Oklahoma State will maintain. He made that spin move, and Pargo slapped it out of his hands. They do a great job of closing the weak side. When you start to reverse, they come and close in a hurry. Victor has got to keep his head up, make sure that he doesn't over-penetrate. You certainly want to take advantage of the defense and get to the gap, but you can't over-dribble. Coach Sutton is not going to be happy with the performance of his backcourt today, but they're going to get better. I mean, he's a tremendous basketball coach. He does a great job of communicating with his guards, but he has a lot of expectations out of those guards. Well, he's chiding Victor not to do what he just did. It was a strong, aggressive move, and Victor has played aggressively, as you mentioned, with those four fouls. Inbounds underneath their own basket. Out to Jan Zian, and now Victor Williams will set up the offense. Excellent job of getting the ball in. That's the first thing you want to do in an out-of-bounds situation, get the ball in play. No Baker on the wing. Sollinger comes out to defend it. In the lane, Baker, bank shot goes. Look for them to go to Moe down the stretch. One-point game. The closest the Cowboys have been since very early in the first half. Both teams are in the penalty, so it's important to play defense without fouling. Sollinger, no good. Tipped by Gomez over two Cowboys. And the Razorbacks are up by three. That's a defensive breakdown, a marginal shot by Sollinger. Didn't box out Gomez, and he's been on the glass today. Baker driving, trying to score. He's fouled by Gomez. And Mo went down hard. He's holding that left arm. A little funny, but maybe his elbow. We'll take a look. Gets just a little bit deep, but he also gets whacked on the head. But he's got a great free throw shooter, 94%. At the line, leads the Big 12 in scoring and in, in free throw shooting. Certainly leads the Cowboys. And you've had your great free throw shooters. Victor at the line. And now you've got Maurice there. And he misses the first one. John Coach Sutton had substituted Andre in the lineup for Ivan, and then Andre didn't box out. Now you see Ivan come back in. Whoever's guarding Gomez away from the ball when the ball is shot has got to box him out and keep him off the glass. He's got a great knack for going to the glass. Baker three for five, make it four for six for the free throw line. And he's still holding that arm a little bit funny, like he hurt his elbow. We'll check on that. As we take a timeout here, 3.14 to go. It's 74-72 Arkansas. You're watching OSU Cowboys Sports Network Basketball. Smiles on many of the Razorback faithful here at Altel Arena in Little Rock. Arkansas with a two-point advantage, 3.14 to go. Razorbacks have the basketball. John, this is not Bud Walton, but certainly a lot of enthusiasm here, and we have a lot of Cowboy fans here as well. T.J. Cleveland out front to Dionisio Gomez. The Cowboys with McFarland, Jan Zian, Victor Williams, Mo Baker, and Melvin Sanders. And Mo Baker comes up with a steal. And now they're going to call a foul on Arkansas. Gomez and Victor Williams trying to get the intentional foul there. That's a break to the Cowboys. I don't think that uh, Coach Richardson wanted Gomez out there handling the ball. Great anticipation. Pressure on the ball by Ivan McFarland. Then a good steal by Moe right there. That's just great awareness by an outstanding senior player. 
Baker has turned it up again in the second half as he did Wednesday night in Kansas City by scoring all 22 of his points in the second half of that game. He has 15 this half, but he's missed two free throws. He fell away from the line that particular time and shot the ball a little bit short. There he stays with it and goes in the hole. He's missed a couple of free throws, two out of four in the last two possessions. One point game inside of three minutes. Baker with 21 points. Carl Baker with the basketball for Arkansas out to TJ Cleveland. Melvin Sanders chasing Gennaro Fargo all over the court. Sanders with four fouls. Yanzian hops out to help. Baker. Baker's been plagued by high ankle strain. I'm a little bit surprised that he's in the game at this particular time. It's close to a wall. Across to Baker. He goes baseline, lays up, and then won't go. McFarland with a basketball. OSU could take the lead for the first time since early in the first half. And a whistle and a foul inside as Victor Williams drove it hard and kicked it out to Maurice Baker. Great defense. We just talked about Baker having that high ankle sprain. Here's a nice penetration. Again, I think Coach Hunt's going to talk to his guards about leaving their feet. But nice penetrating pitch. Victor draws the foul. He's hit his last four in a row. Hargo, who started out red hot, has four fouls now. He leads Arkansas with 21 points. And Victor Williams' first free throw is good. We are tied for the first time since I believe it was 6-6. Well, it's great to be in this atmosphere, but I'm, a, I'm over here cheering for the Cowboys. But I can tell you this, nobody in America is any better in these situations than Eddie Sutton. He's marvelous in post ball games. He gives his players great confidence. Right now, they're in great shape. They have the lead. After being down by 22 points, midway through the first half, OSU leads it 75-74, the first lead of the game. Pargo driving, dishing to Gomez. He'll kick it back out. Now, Gomez, three-pointer on the way. No good. McFarland tipping the ball, trying to control it. It goes over to Maurice Baker, who comes up with it. He should watch out on the backside. They're going to chase the ball with two and three players. Excellent job of ball reversal right there. What a rebound by Ivan McFarland. Nice dish inside. McFarland is blocked by Sullinger, and they're going to say that he was standing on the baseline. What a block by the freshman. Ivan will become stronger, both uh, mentally and physically, but right there, you just got to take it up tough. They probably get all ball right there. You can't anticipate the foul if you get it. It's just a bonus. Big possession right here for the Cowboys. Look for them to go to Maurice Baker. 135 to go. Victor Williams in the lane. Bounce pass goes off the foot of Gomez and it will stay with OSU. I don't believe that was an intentional kick, so the shot clock won't be reset. 12 seconds on the shot clock. And that's what Eddie Sutton was asking about. So 12 seconds, as you said, coach on the shot clock. A minute and a half to play. OSU with their first lead of the ball game. Here's another look at it. Yes, Gomez was not trying to no, get that No, it basketball. wasn't intentional, so the shot clock does not reset. I thought that was a good job of the officials. Now Maurice Baker inside of 10 on the shot clock, looking for a screen. Got a mismatch right there. Yanzin for three at the top of the key. And he hits it. Down. We thought he would be huge down the stretch. Your two seniors. T.J. Cleveland, now OSU's lead at four, and Melvin Sanders has fouled out of the ball game. That's a situation where you've got to play defense with your feet, keep your hands back. You know they're going to try to penetrate. What a big shot by Fred. And that was all created by an isolation play set up off the inbounds by Coach Sutton with Maurice and Fred. They double teamed the ball. Mo got it right at the top. And that's a senior stepping up with big time confidence. He joked during media day before the season started, he was asked if he'd improved his range while playing for the Swedish national team this summer and whether we would see Fred take a few more three pointers. And he smiled and said, I don't know if that's what Coach wants me to do, but I'm going to do it. Well, he's a 40% shooter. I think there's two out of five going in. He doesn't shoot a lot of them, but he knows when to shoot the basketball, and that was the time it came in a big play, and that's what you expect seniors. He's a star along with Baker, and they have to rise to the occasion. We talked about him being involved in the second half. T.J. Cleveland hits both free throws, and it's back to a two-point game. A minute 13 to play. OSU in front, 78-76. It's important to attack this press, get it across, either get to the free throw line or get a high percentage shot. 
Maurice Baker with a basketball in front of the OSU bench. Looks to drive, pulls up. Now Jan Zian on Sullinger, moves in. Bank shot won't go, but he's drawn the foul. And it will go against Sullinger. You say he hooked Jan Zian as he made that move. Brandon Dean, you see there, it's pretty angry, but it's not Dean they call the foul on. You talk about smart coaching. You put the ball in the hands of your best perimeter ball handler, your senior leader, Maurice Baker. He doesn't get open. Then you have Frederick post up, get the ball down low. Fred gets a kind bounce off the rim. He's a better shooter at the free throw line than his percentage would indicate, John. He came in shooting 66% from the line. He is three of four. That's too strong. Rebound to Mo Baker. I jinxed him. I didn't mean to. What a great rebound. And Mo Baker corrals the loose ball, calls a timeout. OSU will maintain possession with 50 seconds left. And it is a full timeout. The Cowboys in front by three, 79-76. More effort from Baker. When we looked at the last two minutes of the game, I told you I felt like Coach Sutton was one of the best in the country. The people that have been involved and the offensive end has been Maurice Baker and Frederick Johnson. They have just done a tremendous job. Mo gets that rebound. I didn't mean to jinx Fred on that free throw. I wanted him to hit it, but Mo gets the rebound. Now what has to happen with 50 seconds? They need another good offensive possession and then one great defensive stand. They should win the basketball game. Right here, Coach Sutton will design a good play to put the ball either in the hands of Maurice or it did down to Fred inside. We are in the penalty situation. If Arkansas fouls, we're going to get two shots. You can see them use some clock, force the Razorbacks to decide if they're going to foul. Tonight's game, a, a testament to just hanging in there when things don't go well on the road. This one started out and looked like it might be the one time the Cowboys don't show up in the first half of the season. Arkansas led this one 32 to 10 midway through the first half. But OSU has clawed back. This is not the toughest uh, start as far as an afternoon game because they had to play Cincinnati at home and turn around and play Austin P the next afternoon. So you expect them to be a little more ready than they were. Inbounds to Frederick Yanzian. He'll give it back to Mo Baker. Watch the double team. Passing and spacing is going to be very important. That's a foul. Brandon Dean grabbing a hold of Victor Williams' jersey. And Dean now with four fouls. And Victor Williams will go back to the free throw line to shoot two. Down the stretch, guarding the three-point line and making sure that they get no second opportunities will be very important for the Cowboys. First free throw good for Victor Williams. It's already a two-possession game, but you'd certainly like to see him make this one have a five-point ball game. And he's nine for ten from the line. Token pressure, good job by the coaches making sure that they work to use some, some time bringing the ball up. Baseline Cleveland throws it out. Oh, great no one. Great defense. And the ball goes out of bounds in front of the OSU bench. The Cowboys will have possession. No turnovers, hit free throws, play defense, rebound, and as bad as you played, you're going home with a victory. Has to be tremendously disappointing for the Arkansas Razorbacks who got out to such a great start today. Dean fouls Victor Williams again, and that'll be it for Brandon Dean. He'll foul out of the game with 15 points, but only three in the second half. You don't think these Razorback people have confidence in what Eddie Sutton can do? If you look at the aisles right now, people are starting to leave. He's the guy that brought big-time college basketball to the state of Arkansas, and certainly Nolan has done a tremendous job winning the national championship in 94. But Eddie Sutton is the guy who brought basketball and then brought renewed enthusiasm to the Cowboys in Oklahoma State, and no one appreciates those fans in gallagher Iowa any more than Coach Eddie Sutton. Victor Williams has hit nine of ten free throws this afternoon and these are key with 30 seconds to play the Cowboys by five make it six this this is the free throw right here this is the free throw that makes it a three possession game it's a big free throw when you look at what happened uh, the other night when Tennessee was playing Louisville I was just about to say okay. that yeah three point game I mean six point game with less than 30 seconds three threes so this is a big big shot 
Victor Williams with 15 points on the afternoon. The Cowboys by seven. Guard the three-point line, rebound the ball. Charles Tatum short on the three, and the ball is loose. Tatum will come up with it. Over to Sullinger. He lobs in a leaning three-pointer, and now they're going to get a breakaway. Victor Williams is going to seal this victory for the Cowboys with a layup. What a comeback. What a comeback. 85-76, under 10 seconds. Teddy Gibson for three. It's short. Williams with the rebound, and he's fouled. And Victor Williams playing almost the entire second half with four fouls. I've watched this man for a long time, Coach. I worked with him for eight years. He is the best in close ball games. He's out saying, what a great win when they didn't play well, John. Maurice Baker is tonight's Carl's Jr. player of the game. 21 points, three rebounds, 7 of 15 for the field. He had 16 of those points in the second half, and you don't think those Cowboys were happy. The way they celebrated after winning this ball game says it all. 85-76 OSU. John, what you have to have in games like this is big-time players have to step up. Victor Williams stepped up at the free throw line. He didn't play particularly well. You had Mo Baker, who was great in the second half. And then Frederick Johnson, how about the three-pointer that he made? Un unbelievable from the top of the key for Frederick Yonzian. Our Pizza Hut delivery of the game, Victor Williams on the break, dishing it to Mo Baker, who goes in for two of his 21 points as he led the Cowboys to their 12th straight victory this afternoon. Once again, the final score is Eddie Sutton comes back to defeat Arkansas. 85-76 Cowboys. We'll be back to wrap this one up from Little Rock in a moment. You're watching the Cowboys Sports Television Network. Attention vegetarians, viewing discretion advised. It's the new Ultimate Meat Lovers Pizza. Cowboys move to 12-0 on the season. You'd like for it to be a little bit more clean than this, but what an incredible comeback from being 22 points down in the first half to Arkansas here on a neutral court in Little Rock. Well, credit to a lot of people. First of all, for Coach Eddie Sutton and his coaching staff, who do a marvelous job. When they were down 20, they never panicked. They kept encouraging their players. They got the lead into single digits before the half. In the second half, some primetime players took over. Maurice Baker has been outstanding in the second half. I'm sure Coach Sutton would like for him to put two halves together. Victor Williams hit big free throws down the stretch. Did a better job of handling the basketball. And then Frederick. The seniors, they took over. He hit the big time three. He got to the free throw line. They kept the ball in his and Moe's hands. The one thing that Coach Sutton's going to do, it's going to be a great Christmas for the Cowboys, but they'll look at that stat sheet, the 30 turnovers. They'll have some Mr. Abatua days when they get back. Well, they have Ball State coming up in the all-college. Then they have about a week before Texas coming into Gallagher. And when they beat Ball State and Texas comes into Gallagher, what I'd love to be there. It's going to be rocking, John. It is going to be fun. The Cowboys, a perfect 12 to start the season. And as you mentioned it, uh, some experience really coming to play here. Frederick Yonzian and Victor Williams each getting into foul trouble early in the first half, but they're both around at the end on the floor. And Coach Sutton so positive with his players down the stretch. Someone make a big play. Let's have a defensive stop. He's so encouraging. He knows how to push those buttons. Experience and certainly has a great feel for his players. And then they respond. They made some big plays. Ivan McFarland got a big rebound where he tapped it around several times and captured the basketball. They made some big plays. Great coaching and great players. I really think the Cowboy fans and their team are going to be in for a special year. Well, we can't stop smiling down here because it looked like the day that just wasn't going to go OSU's way. But as you see here in the final stats, OSU coming back to shoot 57% from the field. Arkansas started out so red hot, but I think, we'll check this, only two three-pointers went down in the second half, 10 of 29 there after they started out so hot. The free throws very much in OSU's favor. You touched on that in the open. Well, I'm sure they'd like to have a better percentage, but they got there 41 times, so they hit 29 of them. That really helped them, especially offset the turnover situation. I mentioned 30. Stats say 29. It's still way too many. They're averaging 15 a game. Coach Sutton would like to have those 10 or less. And if you're in a transition game, maybe 12 or less. But it was a great win here, and certainly not in a neutral court. And I know Sean, who's coming back home, Miss Sutton, the family was here. It's a big win for the Suttons, but a great win for Oklahoma State and the Cowboy and their fans. 691st career victory for Eddie Sutton and few perhaps more memorable than this one on Saturday afternoon over Nolan Richardson and the Arkansas Razorbacks. For the coach James Dickey and for our crew here in Little Rock, 
I'm John Holcomb. Thanks for watching. Once again, the Cowboys are 12 and 0, sixth ranked team in the nation, knocks off Arkansas, coming from 22 points back in the first half to post an 85-76 win. We hope you have a happy holidays, and we'll see you at Baylor. Network and OSU Cowboy Basketball was brought to you by Bank of Oklahoma. You're better off at BOK. Carl's Jr. Different is better. Garfield's Restaurant and Pub. Great times, great tastes. OG&E. Power at the speed of life. Oklahoma Farm Bureau. All around.